Thank um, I welcome the opportunity to speak on this bill this evening. And I must thank Deputy Daly, who secured the time through the Business Committee in affording the time here this evening. I want to acknowledge the work of Senator Kelleher and indeed the NASC, the Irish Refugee Council, Oxfam, who I believe are, are sitting here in the gallery this evening. And I also want to acknowledge the presence here of Alice Mary Higgins, who has been a great supporter of Senator Kelleher in getting it to this stage. Um, it's important that I put on the record that Fianna Fáil will continue to be supporting this bill. Fianna Fáil of support. In the past, Fianna Fáil did support the passage of the 2015 International Protection Act as provided for the introduction of a single procedure for international protection applications. And this was a key recommendation of the McMahon Group on direct provision. The old system led to excessive delays in processing of applications, resulting in asylum seekers spending many years awaiting a decision on their application. Since the Act commenced, there has been a reduction in the time spent in direct provision, and this is obviously something that we must welcome. I want to acknowledge that a commitment was made to provide for 4,000 refugees at the height of the refugee crisis and indeed another to provide for the 200 unaccompanied minors. A number of issues have arisen regarding the implementation of these commitments. A number of refugees that Ireland received was obviously less than the targeted, for example, but these are not for the relevant to discussions tonight. The issue on hand is that the current legislation has led to deeply inhumane situations. Families have been unable to trace a child within a year who have lost the right to family reunification. There's numerous cases, Minister, and I think Deputy Daly spoke about them earlier on, but I'll tell you about one in my constituency of a young man who came here on asylum. Pardon? Where from? I'm just trying to... Syria. From Syria. He Skypes his mother daily. He's now touched 18 years of age and his time has lapsed by the time he was put into care through foster care and everything else. He didn't know his rights, he didn't know anything else, but the year has gone and he hasn't got the opportunity to do the reunification. He Skypes her on a daily basis, but because of his age, that he has fallen through the cracks. And that is the cost by the changes which took place in 2015, and it's plain. During the debates on the original bill, we made clear our reservations concerns about a number of areas and we brought forward amendments on foot of these concerns. The Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission recommended that consideration be given to a range of family relationships to which Article 8 of the European Convention on Human Rights can apply in the context of this legislative proposal. The Act does not provide any means for a refugee or person eligible for subsidiary protection to apply for family reunification with other dependent family members, including parents, wards, grandchildren and adult children. The Refugee Act of 1996 included the possibility for refugees to apply for the dependent family members, meaning any grandparent, parent, brother, sister, child, grandchild, ward or guardian of the refugee who is dependent on the refugee or is suffering from a mental or physical disability to such an extent that it is not reasonable for him to maintain himself or herself fully. Plainly, Minister, what I'm trying to say in plain English is that what, we, what happened in 2015, in some respects, hasn't worked. And we have to really, cannot say, what is a value of one family in one country is not a value in another. Because we all know here that family is mother, father, brother, sister, uncle, aunt, grandparent. And no matter what time length it takes to reunify people in this country, whether through children who were adopted with no rights in the past, who hadn't access to knowing their, their true relationships at all times, and the way we talk about our deep, dark past, and Minister Sapone is at pains to remind us of our deep, dark past. We are now starting to see the value of reunification, and it could take the guts of 10, 20, 30 years but what we're saying to people coming into this country, unless you get there in a year, the game is up. And that is the flaw in the 2015. And that is something that we should consider. I'm not saying that what I'm, and I think I agree with Deputy Smith in what she said. There's a necessary correction, and it's as simple as that. 
I, I do think it's disappointing that the government are not in a position to, to support the bill. This is an issue that isn't going to go away. Senator Kelleher has support in the, in the Senate. Deputy Daly has support in this House by the majority. And it's something that is going to continue to be discussed and discussed, unfortunately, Minister. But it is something that we have to try and get, get a balance on. Because we cannot say that people can come into this country and they haven't the right to, to, to reunification. As I said, our party is supportive of this. I would like to think that somewhere along the line that we could let this go out to committee, as Deputy Osnodi said, and let it to be teased out to such a way as that we can bring a positive resolution. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Deputy.